Hi guys, welcome to Drunk on Games. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at the Pathfinder Adventure card games and its general gameplay. My name's Albert, I'm going to be your narrator and player in our six-man group going through the adventure of Pathfinder. Now, the Pathfinder Adventure card game is a card-based game where you build your party to hunt villains across various locations in sort of the setting of Sword Coast. So in the Pathfinder Adventure card game, there are many character classes to choose from. Each one has their own set of unique skills, powers, and cards. So their skills are vary from their standard uh, Dungeons and Dragons. You have your six strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. But in the Adventure card game, they're all focused around a certain die size. My character this time, I'm going to be pulling out is Harsk, who is going to have, you know. He's best in his dexterity with a d... Actually, his best is constitution with a d12. His dexterity is going to be a d8. And the cards will that you find and encounter in this game will ask you to do checks related to those skills and those therefore those dice. The powers area lists what your hand size is, as well as weapons and armor you can be proficient with. So hard school, for example, would be proficient with light armors and weapons. Additionally, each class has their own set of powers, or, you know, abilities that they can use in various situations. Basically using the ability to help any teammate at a different location. Effectively firing his bow or anything else. Giving some suppressive fire. Finally there are the cards. The cards section will list what your player deck is comprised of. Now there are, this game has two types, two main groups of cards. First set are Bane. Banes are comprised of monsters, barriers, henchmen, and then each scenario has their own villain. The player deck is comprised of various boons. So you'll have your armor, weapons, spells, items, allies, and blessings. Now, each scenario you have a number of locations equal to the number of players plus two. So for my example right now, I've got my three locations and my player marker showing which location I'm at. And the goal of the scenario is to corner the villain by closing or temporarily closing the various locations and then defeating him. Now it's important to know the requirements to close a location to effectively corner him. Now, a player turn is has six steps involved. First, you advance the blessings deck. This is sort of your countdown to the end of game. If you haven't defeated the villain by the end, that's it. He's succeeded at his task and, you know, blown up the world or, you know, captured the princess. So, first you flip Blessings deck, and this becomes your Blessings discard pile. Then, if you, if you like, you can give a card to another player at your location. Obviously, I'm on my own today. I don't have anybody to give anything to. Then you can change location, so I can move my character to any other location on the board. It can be closed, it can be open, doesn't matter. Finally, I would explore. This is the key part of this game where you're looking to find cards to either boost your own deck or defeat the villain. So when you explore, you will flip the top card of that location and you would use it if it's a bane like this one would be. It is a check to defeat or to banish and it will ask you for you know some, some skill related check or a combat check. Assuming you know I use, use my weapons and I defeat this, this henchman, he would be banished and I would use you know, so many cards to do so. Then I reset my hand back to my hand size of five. Your hand size will vary depending on each character you play and that's going to be listed on your power section. And finally I would end my turn and it would go to the next player who would then once again start their turn flipping the blessing. Now with the Banes you know you have your check to defeat and it goes away. Boons you have your check to acquire. So all your boons have some related check. Typically weapons or armors are going to have something based on your constitution or strength, maybe dexterity. Uh, spells can be related to your arcane arcane or divine skills, which are typically related to the intelligence, charisma, or wisdom abil abilities. Items vary. They, they, can, they can range the whole gambit. And then allies typically take some charisma or some wisdom to, you know, talk to someone and then your blessings uh, vary depending on that god 
However, for the Banes, when you encounter a henchman, once you defeat him, you have a chance to close a location. Getting back to the importance of this. Once you close a location, you would banish all the cards from that deck, and that location would become closed. Let's say next turn we go and we find the villain. When you encounter the villain, every other player at an open location can temporarily close that location by completing the closing requirements. But again, this is temporarily closed. You're just sort of like putting up a uh, small barricade. If you defeat the villain, you automatically close that location. Regardless of the requirements, you can just close it. Done. Then, if there are any locations that have not been closed, the villain will randomly run to one of those locations. If you've closed or temporarily closed everything, congratulations, you defeated your villain and you acquired the rewards for your scenario. Of course there are you know minor details on how cards go through your deck and using of certain cards and the combats, but that is our general run through of how this game will go. Thank you for watching and please join us on our Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Tuesdays we do our typical drunk on games and drinking rules and our Wednesdays for our adventure or legacy game.